Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. My name is Wallace Smith. It's good to be here. What I want to talk about for this particular webcast is an item that I wanted to mention in the previous one, but really I'd like to think about it a little more and take a little more time with the thought. In the wake of the terrible attacks in Paris of recent days, where currently the death toll has risen to at least 130, there were interviews with various ones in Paris and there was a particular article that caught my attention. Uh, it was a part of Haaretz newspaper coming out of Israel and the title is uh, November 15th, 2015. The title is this, In Paris neighborhood heavily hit by terrorists, residents view attackers as victims. Uh, there's quotes in here from folks they interviewed and there was a particular group of uh, I think about three and there was a young woman Sabrina amongst that group whose statement just jumped out at me. Uh, this paragraph talks about what she said. They're stupid but they aren't evil. Uh, their friend Sabrina, an administrative worker in one of the theaters in the 11th arrondissement said, they are victims of a system that excluded them from society. That's why they felt this doesn't belong to them and they could attack. There are those who live here in alienation and we are all to blame for this alienation. Uh, let me jump ahead to another statement later in the article. Uh, this is just the, arth the author of the article writing. He says, most residents of the 11th arrondissement are what the French call bobo, bohemian and bourgeois, uh, middle class academics in their 30s and 40s with clearly leftist leanings. He says, now the restaurants and bars that they frequent every night were attacked and some of their friends were killed and wounded and they were having a hard time reconciling this with their worldview. It's an interesting article and it was very surprising on one hand that after such an atrocious attack you'd have these people that essentially say, well no really the terrorists are the victims. We're all at fault for somehow enabling this to happen. Like there's no recognition of evil in the world. But it didn't completely surprise me because if you go back to the Charlie Hebdo uh, attack in Paris where the journalists of the satirical newspaper uh, were attacked and killed as well, there was actually a report in the New York Times back in January uh, 22, January 22nd, 2015, and the title was this. Again, we're talking the beginning of the year. It says, Paris announces plan to promote secular values. And I'll just again read from this article from the New York Times back in January of 2015. It said, officials in France announced new measures on Thursday aimed at reinforcing secular values at French schools after the terrorist attacks in and around Paris exposed serious cultural rifts between children in heavily immigrant communities and others in classrooms throughout the country. Uh, let's say they talked to a, uh, an education minister in the government and she said the issues had become apparent when some students refused to observe a moment of silence in schools after the attacks which left 17 people dead. Now you read later in the article and there were about 200 such incidents where students refused to observe the moment of silence in honor of the victims. Uh, in fact, a, a particular school teacher mentioned that three quarters of his students would not participate in the moment of silence. And he says in the article, the first shocking words I heard were that the murders were justified. Uh, in fact, later it quotes a, uh, the general secretary of a particular um, uh, civil servants union in the educational field who said teachers were unprepared and didn't often find the words to confront students who criticized Charlie Hebdo. To me, those things are tied together. Uh, the comments after the most recent attack are tied to the fact that how does Paris respond, how does France respond to this attack by a uh, radical Islamicist? By going more secular, by diving more deeply into a purely secular culture. And I am sorry, but an atheist, secular worldview is bankrupt of all the values that you could possibly bring to bear to fight against a worldview like that of Islamic terrorism, uh, from these radical Islamicists. Uh, completely bankrupt. It's like, 
It's like the Islamicists uh, from ISIS are bringing a firestorm and going out against it, trying to put it out with, with water guns and squirters. It's not sufficient. It is a bankrupt worldview. It provides no meaning to life. Uh, it provides no purpose for life. And it provides no real grounding for values in life. Now, how does that potentially feed prophecy and the flow of prophecy? Because the Bible talks about, in Revelation chapter 13, a religious power that will be used to bring unity to Europe. Uh, a false miracle working prophet that will be part of a religious restoration in Europe. Isn't there the potential in Europe, in the face of such a powerful, deeply held uh, religion, in the convictions of the attackers, to respond by saying, you know, we have our own religion. We have our own heritage. Uh, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church has encouraged Europe to rediscover its roots. Is it possible that in these attacks, some might be moved to actually do so and decide to fight fire with fire? We'll see. Uh, we know Jesus Christ said to all, watch. I recommend all of us keep watching. And thank you for watching this. I hope you'll check out everything that we have to offer on tomorrowsworld.org and our page on Facebook.